Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing one more internal force problem. And I picked this problem because it is cool in the sense that it has two new supports which we haven't looked at before. And it also covers the concept of taking a cut of our member, but looking to the left or the right of a force that's applied at the point, okay? So that will make uh, a lot more sense once we get into the problem. But let's just read through and see what we're dealing with. So rod AB is fixed to a smooth collar D, which slides freely along the vertical guide. So that's just over here. Determine the internal normal force, shear force, and moment at point C, which is located just to the left of the 60 pound concentrated load. So the first thing I wanna do is just cover what these uh, supports are actually doing here. Uh, so let's look at the rocker first. Uh, the rocker is similar in the sense that, uh, you know, it's comparable to a roller where it has one unknown. And the reaction is a force which acts perpendicular to the surface at the point of contact, okay? So this is our point of contact here, and that means we would have the perpendicular reaction acting like this. So let's label that just B for now. Uh, so similar to the rocker, it can laterally sway back and forth, but instead of rolling, it's just going to rock and kind of pivot about that point. Now let's look at uh, the collar here. So the collar is going to have two unknown reactions, and it's going to be a moment and a reaction perpendicular to the rod. Uh, why is that? So if we try to pull this rod, uh, laterally from left to right, you can see that this metal uh, bracing is going to prevent that. So we know we're going to have a reaction like this. And the moment is produced uh, because of this collar as well. So let's imagine that these forces are trying to rotate the member downwards like this about that point. But the face here and the face here on this collar are actually pushing against this rod meaning that it cannot rotate freely, which is why this moment is produced. So you can imagine there's a couple at this point and this point uh, creating this moment here. So we could label this MD and uh, let's do DX. So what do we do first? When we have a problem like this, we know we need to look for our reactions first, but first we should identify what our distributed loads are and the resultant forces produced by those in order to solve this problem quickly. So we have one distributed triangular load here, and we have another distributed triangular load here. And we know by now where the resultant forces are going to be acting, something like this. And we can label this FR1 and FR2. And we can solve these pretty quickly and take FR1 is equal to one half. The height of that distributed load, which is 15 pounds per feet, and then that is going to be over the span, which is three feet. The feet cancel out, and that leaves us with FR1 equal to 22.5 pounds. And then similarly, we can do the same for FR2, where we have one half, also 15 pounds per foot. And that is going to be 1.5 feet here, meaning that this answer is going to be half of what we saw for before which is 11.25 pounds. Okay, so now that we have that, we can either solve for the reactions at D or the reactions at B. But I'm gonna start with the reaction at B first and I'm gonna show you why shortly. So let's see what is actually happening when we analyze this rocker a little closer. Okay, so now that we're taking a closer look at this rocker, we can see that we already assumed that we had a reaction B created by the support. But anytime we have a diagonal reaction, we know that we can break it down into its Y components and its X components. And the reason this angle was given to us in the problem is so that we can use it in order to solve for these components, right? So if we think about this logically, we can assume that uh, level would have been our X axis, right? And we're actually on a 30 degree tilt from where that X axis is. So that means the distance or the degree between the by and the x is going to be a 90 degree angle. And if we know that this line here is representing the ground surface, that means that the distance between b and the distance between the perpendicular is 90 degrees. So if we have 60 degrees here and 30 degrees here to make 90, that means this should be 30 degrees. Because this also needs to create 90 as well. Now that we know that, we can actually go ahead and solve for our by and bx components. So in order to do this, we need to take the equilibrium 
of fy first, because we still have an unknown x here that we can't work with. So we take the fy summation and simply solve this as we normally would, trying to solve for this by component. But what is this by component going to be? It's going to be b, the cosine of 30 degrees. Now we just have to deal with all these other forces, which we solved for before. We have FR2, which is 11.25, the 60 pound concentrated force, 22.5, which is FR1, and that's all of our Y components. So when we solve for B, we actually know that the answer is gonna give us 108.25 pounds. So what do we do with this? Now we can take this and solve for BY, which is going to be this answer, 108.25, the cosine of 30 degrees. Why is that? Because it's the adjacent to the 30 degree angle. And we can also do the same with BX here, except instead of cosine, we are going to take the sine. And solving this, we are simply going to be left with 93.75 pounds and 54.13 pounds. So now what? What do we do? Do we have to solve for this MD? We actually don't need to solve for it. But why is that? We don't need to solve for it because we have everything we need if we took a section from left to right based on this point C, right? We have all the reactions that we need at that support, so we can simply take that cut already. So when we take this cut, we also have to remember that the 60 pound force is gonna have to stay inside of the member that we analyze because we're taking just to the left of that force. So let's take that cut and see what we're looking at. Okay, so now we have the cut made and it looks like there's a lot going on, but we've done a similar thing like this before and we'll quickly realize that it's not too tricky once we get into it. Uh, so the first thing we do, like always, we like to solve for the moment at C because it's the trickiest one and we wanna just get it out of the way first. So we take that moment at C equal to zero, remembering our convention, and we look at what forces are gonna be involved. So we have obviously the moment at C, we have FR2, which we solved for earlier here, and we have the BUI, which are all going to play a role in the moment. And the 60 pound force, you can see it's still retained in our cut, but it's not going to play a role in the moment because it's technically applied uh, right on that C point because it's just specifying that's just to the left. So we can consider it as zero. Um, so pretty much we're gonna take negative moment at C based on the convention. We're also going to take the negative FR2, which is 11.25. And that distance away is gonna be one third of the span based on this triangular distribution. So that's gonna be 0.5 feet. And then we have that BY, which is gonna be creating a positive moment. So that's 93.75 pounds. And that distance away is 1.5 feet. Solving for a moment at C, we have the tricky one out of the way and that's gonna be 135 pounds per feet. Sign's correct, so that means our drawing's correct too. Uh, let's move on to another easy one. Let's do F at X. We know there's only one X component here. It's gonna be that BX, and we've already solved for it before. So we have zero is equal to negative normal at C minus the BX as well, which is 54.13. Therefore, normal at C is gonna equal negative 54.13 pounds. So that means it's actually gonna be looking something like this rather than the way we drew it in our convention. Lastly, we solve for that shear force here by taking the summation of forces at y equal to zero. And based on the convention, we have shear force positive. And then we have all of these other forces acting. The 60 pound force is going to play a role, which is kind of the trick to this whole sentence right here. It's just adding that 60 to this FY calculation here. Uh, we also have the FR2, which we calculated before, once again, 11.25 pounds. And then the BY once again, which is 93.75 pounds. Solving for shear force at C, it is going to be negative 22.5 pounds, meaning that it's going to look something like this rather than the way the convention drew it. So these are your final answers.